Hello friends! I've had a number of people ask me if they should go to Anarchapoco 2020. And, well, I guess my bottom line answer is, uh, yeah, if you can afford it and you have the time, yes. Um, Lynn and I are going, and uh, it's... We weren't as sure this year, but we're, we're going. And so I'll tell you some of the pros and the cons, and this is just kind of my review. Um, and first of all, I want to say that this, I, I think it, this kind of started out not so much as a big, huge money-making idea. Uh, I think Jeff just kind of wanted an excuse to hang out with some like-minded friends, and I don't know what his motivations were. I'm just making this stuff up. But that was my guess, that that's kind of how it started. And then as years went by, it's going, hey, we can make some money here. We can make a business out of this. And that's where it is today. And that's wonderful and that's his option and I think I would do exactly the same thing if I was if it was my my convention my conference and I'd gone to all that work so some of the the negative things that have come from the corporatization of the event uh, include uh, the complaints that you're you're hearing about you can't sell your tickets or swap your tickets out and everything's commercialized and you have to have a, a booth to get to sell your t-shirts and you can't just set it up and have it be a a willy-nilly kind of thing, um, but like the truth is, we're anarcho-capitalists. Whose property is it? It's Jeff's property. He's leasing it from the hotel, and he gets to do whatever he wants. And why would he want to have competitors on property he's paying for? So I, I get all that. It's not as loosey and goosey and lovey-dovey rainbow festival as we might wish it was so that we could sell our crap and make our money without having to pay rent or much rent. Um, but it's, it's all his thing. It's, it's his choice. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, some of the negatives are the convention is billed as an anarcho-capitalist uh, event. And there's some of that. Um, but I would say of the I don't know how many people come. I mean, yeah, I've seen the official numbers, and I get marketing, but I don't know how many people actually really come and pay. But let's say 1,500 or let's say 2,000 people. Let's say 2,000 people last couple years have come. Um, I, I Just my rough estimates from chit-chatting with people, probably 300 of those are true. They understand Lysander Spooner and Rothbard and Carl Watner and Larkin Rose and and uh, kind of that whole voluntarist, anarcho-capitalist, deep intellectual part, uh, probably 300-ish people. And then another many hundreds are really into veganism. And another many hundreds are really into uh, weed or ayahuasca or whatever you millennial people these days do. Uh, you're so much smarter than I am because I drink beer and it makes me fat and, and, and hurts my health and like more power to you for, for smoking the marijuanas. Uh, but th there's that whole crowd that's just kind of, it's a, it's a cool jivey place to come and hang out. Another demographic that's pretty famously represented, a lot, a lot of these folks there, are the uh, conspiracy enthusiasts. Another couple few hundred people that are uh, more of the natural healing, you know, forget the scientific method, we just really feel that this stuff's better for us. Uh, kind of a hippie crossover almost thing. Um, there, there, There's another group of people I noticed more this last year that are the, I'm not going to say the, uh, oh, the capital letters, the names spelled in capital letters in the government that makes you part of the the maritime law and, and because there's some little thing that the bad guys wrote 200, 300 years ago, it's an intricacy or 20 intricacies and the yellow brick road and Dorothy's red slipper and therefore if you can just catch the bad guys on that, then they're gonna go, oh, we were wrong, okay, you win and now you don't have to pay taxes. There's kind of that group um, and I just, to be straightforward here, I'm not part of that group. You probably didn't pick up on that. Um, so there, there's that group. And and then there's just a group of people that are, that's a different thing. Uh, and I actually think that that would be the best way to think of this conference convention festival is an alternative festival. 
And if you have an alternative viewpoint, there are lots of people there that are definitely not anarcho-capitalists. They are socialists, they are, they just don't understand anarcho-capitalism, and that, that's fine. But don't think it's an anarcho-capitalist convention. Having said that, here's another good side. In your town, be it little middle of nowhere Arkansas or be it New York City, do you ever have, within a quarter mile of you, do you ever have 300 principled anarcho-capitalists hanging out? No, I, I don't in my town. Um, so that is why I go. I don't care for 90% of the talks that are put on. 10% I do care for, I like them, but for me, it's the bar. It's hanging down at the bar, finding somebody, just starting to chit-chat with them, realizing, oh my gosh, we have this in common, we have this in common, ooh, let's argue about this because we disagree, and just those good, deep, intellectual debates. That's what I thrive on, that's what I love. That's what makes it worth it for my wife and I to spend five to $7,000 probably this year to come down for a week. And it's expensive. So if you're only, if you don't have the money to do it, uh, then you find your community another way. But for those of you that have asked me, if you have the money and you're willing to do it, it's, it's a good thing. A, a couple people that I've advised against this. One of them was a very successful businessman and he is not alternative in the least. He simply has studied some history and economics and philosophy and is pretty much like-minded. He would have gained a lot from it, but he's not going to enjoy being around people that haven't bathed in a few weeks and smell of patchouli oil and weed. And so if you are a, a golf club kind of person, um, if that's what you're used to as the country club uh, area or, or, or that, that demographic, this isn't your place. This is, uh, this is not your place. There aren't that many sports coats there. There are lots of t-shirts. Uh, there are lots of sandals. And that's, that's the demographic. Um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of my rundown. I, so again, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I think it's worth it. Um, lots of little tiny things I don't like, but really none of my business. Um, lots of little tiny things I love. And I'm going. And I hope to see you there. And I'll probably do another video like this for next year based on what I've learned from this year, 2020. Thanks, y'all.